Thanks for tuning in guys, the Pest and Lawn Ginger. Now I've been on the pest control and lawn care scene for almost 20 years now. Spring and fall overseeding is a must and there's several different ways you can approach it. But one thing you don't want to skimp on is a quality seed and you'll find in most of my videos this yellow bag by Barenbrug. You know, I trust it so much, I even put it in my own yard. It can't be beat. I must admit, it's beautiful. I just want to bathe in it. Oh yes, it's glorious. The most common question I get about seeds is which one should I pick up at the local home and garden store? Well, most of you end up learning the same lesson I learned years and years ago where it's like a bad version of Forrest Gump where he says, my mama always said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. In an effort to figure out why the Barenberg products are so much better than their competitors that you find at the local stores, I flew out to Albany, Oregon, the seed capital of the world. Today, we visit the Barenbrook facility to show you the process of getting grass seed from the field all the way through production to you as the consumer at your home. It's been really nice to get to know a lot of the employees here at Barenbrook in Oregon. We've been sitting down and talking, and one of the questions I had is where does it all start? And I was kind of shocked to find that the seed varieties start with product demand. They do a lot of polling, they ask a lot of questions from the consumers, and what I found out is it's you guys at home that are dictating the demand and the types of varieties of grass that end up at your doorstep, whether that be color, disease resistance, drought tolerance, etc. Now once Barenberg has a good idea of what you, the people, want, they've got to figure out how to make it happen. They take your guys' ideas and they send it to their research centers. Matter of fact, the United States has the research center and two additional trial sites. They have one on the Northeast, they've got one in the transitional zone, and they also have one on the Northwest Coast, which is the one that we're seeing now. The three trial sites were placed very strategically in order to test different variables. For example, the Northeast will test very well for color and cold temperature tolerance. Where the transitional zones, we're gonna look at heat tolerance, humidity tolerance, and disease tolerance. Now on the northwest side, we look at overall traffic tolerance and overall quality. They say if you can't grow it in Oregon, it shouldn't be on any lawn. Now I was like kid in the candy store and I had the pleasure of meeting the research director. His name is Yadel. Your job is very important. I mean, it all starts here. Well, you know, I usually say I watch grass grow for a living. <laughs> so and I say that's worse patients, than or... watching paint dry. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's so difficult, yeah, right? It's, so we started in the early 90s here. Early but, 90s? Yeah, Barenbrug, uh, you know, we, we've been around for over a century. But that's this facility, early 90s? Yeah, this facility. But Barenbrug as a group, you know, it's, we're on the third generation of ownership now. Wow. We've been around for over a century. Really? And I didn't know that. Yeah. What we focus on is really grass. Okay. You know, the conception of an idea, really. Yeah. And saying, okay, we're going to develop a plant that's, say, resistant to this disease. And, and depending on where your resistance yeah. source is, sure. you know, it can be sure that well over a decade of research, you know, so a decade cool. and a half in most cases, of research went into developing that, that variety of bike. <laughs> that's really it's, exciting. Uh, I, I get uh, really excited about that. Uh, now, Yadil wasn't about to give me all of Barenbrook's secrets, but what he did let me know is the majority of their success comes from a process called population genetics. The easiest way I can describe it to you is they take the healthiest plant variety they can find and they clone it. Now, the Barenbrook Research Center will clone about 60,000 plugs of grass annually to study. Now this process generally starts in the fall time when they do the majority of their planting. Now the point of population genetics is to alter or get rid of the species that aren't doing as well. Now as these plants mature, the workers are gonna go through on a rotation. They'll see each individual plant once a week to once every other week. Now as the plants begin to mature, if they show any signs of stress or if the tissue of the plant isn't ideal, 
they just kill it. Now, this is one of those old methods of the strongest and fittest shall survive. Now, in order to remove any employee bias, they usually take rotation, so not the same person is always looking at the exact same plant every single time. Now, the Baron Brug employees are meticulous about documenting their findings and what's being discarded, but what I found out 95% of the plants over the course of a three-year period will end up being discarded. Once the surviving plants mature and they form a mature seed head, those seed heads are chopped off the top and left to dry. Now this is a very important part of the process because the research team wants to check how much seed yield there is to see if it's a sustainable model for the farmers to produce that grass seed variety. You can see there's plenty of seed on that. And by the time it comes out of the combine, what you have is really straws devoid of any seeds. These guys are like the gangsters of grass seed, right? They come out here, they do trials, studies, everything so the technology that you guys get at home started 15 years ago it's been a pleasure visiting with you deal and the barenberg team at the research center and i got all my questions answered and more i had no clue the barenberg has been researching developing grassy for well over 100 years and that was almost shocking to me but it makes sense every time i use the products they germinate well they've got good color and great overall health so what's next how do we get it from the research center and into the consumer's hands? Oh, guys, Coo Seed Company, this is where it all begins. Now, Coo Seed Company plays an important role because they're the ones that actually manufacture and produce seed. Now, what a privilege it was to be with this father-son duo on such a fantastic day. Now, truth be told, Barenbrook is such a large-scale operation. They commission farmers from across the world, and it's no wonder they picked a facility like Coos. Coos Seed Company, super high tech, extremely clean, they are very efficient, and they get extremely high yields of seed out of their grows. Now, as I mentioned before, Barenberg commissions them to plant a very specific type of seed. Now, just as we saw at the research facility, the farmers do it on a large scale operation by putting plugs in the field and allowing it to go to a seed head. Now, once the seed head gets to full maturity and full density, those seed heads are pushed down by a machine and allowed to dry for about seven to 10 days and waiting for harvest. Now, the combines at Coos Seed Co. make the combines at the research center look like little micro machines <laughs> these things are huge the tires themselves are almost seven feet tall i'm sure you've heard the old saying time is money so they bring in tractors to haul off the excess seed so these combines can work 24 7. now once the tractor trailers are full they bring the yielded seed into these holding bays the purpose of the holding bays is to prevent contamination between varieties. The next step of the process is to filter and clean out impurities from the seed that was just yielded. But before we do that, I had to see if I could beat the king of the mountain, Mr. Coos himself. Climb the mountain. If for some reason the grass you buy has a sweet stench to it, I've got grass seed where grass seed should not go. Now I'm pretty excited to show you the cleaner, especially after coming off of Seed Mountain. This is a sophisticated and complex device. It all begins the loader operator loads the pit area with a sufficient amount of seed. Now the seed needs to be fed slowly and smoothly. Now at the bottom of the pit here, we have a series of elevators 
that pushes the seed to the top floor of the three-story cleaner. Yes, I said three stories. At the top of the cleaner, we go into a mechanism that splits the yield of the seed to make it easier to go through the machine. Now, the first machine that the seed is gonna go through is what's called a de-bearder. Now, the de-bearder is a very important aspect. It helps remove the grass seed from the rest of the debris that's attached to the seed. Now, a lot of times with the tip of the seed, there'll be a little spike. Now, we call that spike an on. This machine removes the on. Now a lot of grass seeds don't have an on, but what it does help do is smooth the grass seed out. Now once the grass seed has been smoothed out, on's been removed, it gets dropped directly from the debeerder onto a series of tables that they call the cleaner. You can see it does a bang up job getting rid of the straw and pushing the grass seeds through. Now this device is massive. It's two stories and it's got seven tables just the same. Now the difference is, is the diameter, the whole width on each one of the shaker tables changes. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller to match the average diameter of grass seed. Now this is very similar to the shakers that you'll find at gold mines, but the purpose of this shaker is simply to remove the excess waste. Now, there's something oddly satisfying about watching the shaker table. This thing is really big, it's obnoxious sounding, but at the end of the day, watching it separate the seed from the debris, it's pretty cool. Once the seed reaches the bottom of the cleaner table, it gets pushed back up to the third story floor to a machine called the Carter Day. Now, the purpose of this machine is to filter out less desirable seeds. So the first thing it does is it shoots the seed with a bunch of air. Now this is a first ditch effort to get rid of Poanoa, which is a really light seed that ends up in grass seed. So the more dense seed falls straight to the bottom and the Poa gets filtered out. Now on the middle floor of the Carter's Day machine, we run through a series of discs. Now these discs filter grass seed. Now this machine is the reason why you can really guarantee a 99.9% .9 efficacy rate on seed type. Now they have several discs in the cut. Some of them target annual grasses, some of them target different perennial grasses like the difference between bunching tall fescue, Bermuda, Kentucky bluegrass, uh, perennial ryegrass, etc. Now that we've gotten through the cleaner area and we've gone through the filtration system of the Carter Day machine, we end up carting all that material back up to the top and dropping it through the main primary aspirator. Now again, this is a last ditch effort to get rid of Poa Noa and those less desirable annual grasses, which I'm really thankful that they go through this. Now it's also got a device at the end that takes a random generated samples that get sent to OSU. Now OSU has an extensions to the agriculture department. Now what they do there is they verify seed quality. Now, the reason why this is so important is because this gives you the certificate on the bag that guarantees that that seed is exactly what it is, and it tests to see if there's any noxious weeds in the bag. Now, ideally, we want to have zero noxious weeds, which Baron Brug is known for. Now we're back full circle, back to Barenbrug. And this is where things get really exciting to me because this is where the technology happens. We've gone through the stages where the farmers have yielded the seed and now we're back where they bring each individual variety and they start blending them together. And that's what makes Barenbrug very unique. Now, if you're wondering why they blend different varieties in one bag, it's because you want to have a careful balance between traffic tolerance, heat and cold stress, and overall health properties for each variety that you decide to carry. Now, this beautiful piece of machinery is their Yellow Jacket Technology coating machine. Now, what it does is it coats each individual seed with a starter fertilizer that has a proprietary blend of minerals and nutrients to get the seed to germinate properly. Now, it has a series of heaters and coolers to make sure that the Yellow Jacket Technology is applied to the seed correctly. Now, at the end of the day, Barenbrug puts in so many fail safes to deliver you a valid and a reliable product. Even this palletizer is limiting the amount of hands that touch each bag. 
Now at the end of the day, the cheaper seed varieties are cheaper for a reason. Berenbrug has a hundred years of R&D. They also have fail safes in all their seed blended varieties and overall, they're a ginger preferred product. Now it's nice to be around a company like Berenbrug that is highly committed to bringing you the very best. If you guys haven't tried their products out, I highly recommend that you do. They are a ginger preferred product. In the meantime, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up in the comments below. Love to help you guys out. Till next time, guys, it's the Ginger. We're slaying lawns.